For the given charge distribution, the net electric field at the center of the non-conducting ring is. So we have a charged ring. The top half of the ring is positively charged. It has a charge density of 10 nanocoulomb per meter. The bottom half of the ring is negatively charged with the same charge density, but it is negatively charged. We have to find out what is the electric field at the center of the ring. All right, so what is the key concept here? You know this very well, that the electric field due to a uniformly charged circular arc at its center is along the angle bisector of the angle subtended at the center and its magnitude is given by E is equal to 2k lambda by r sine alpha by 2. Big statement, small concept. We have a circular arc. If it is subtending an angle alpha at the center, then the electric field is going to be along the angle bisector. Okay. If it is positively charged, obviously it is going to be away from the charge. And if it is negatively charged, then the electric field is going to be in the direction of the charge okay or towards the charge and what is the magnitude 2k lambda by r sine alpha by 2 all right so let's apply this okay for, so first let's calculate the electric field due to the top half of the ring so the electric field is going to be in this direction all right so let's find out what is e so e is 2 and what is k k is 9 into 10 to the power 9 si units what is lambda lambda is given to us as 10 nano coulomb per meter so i'm going to write it as 10 into 10 to the power minus 9 Coulomb per meter. Always we are going to use SI units. The radius is 1. Now alpha. What is alpha? Alpha is what angle? Alpha is this angle over here. Is that correct? This angle over here is alpha. So this part of the ring and this part of the ring, what is it subtending at the center? It is subtending 180 degree. So I have to write alpha by 2. So that is going to become sine 90 degree. All right. So simple calculation 10 to the power 9, 10 to the power minus 9 gone sine 90 degree is going to be 1. So we have 180 Newton per coulomb. All right, the direction downwards. Now we have the negatively charged part of the ring. Okay, due to that, the electric field is still going to be in this direction because it is negatively charged. So electric field is going to be towards the charge. Okay, now the magnitude of lambda is the same. Radius is the same. Alpha is the same. So there is no reason that the magnitude of electric field is going to be any different. So because of this as well, the magnitude of electric field is going to be 180 Newton per Coulomb. So the net electric field is going to be the addition of both these vectors. They are in the same direction. Hence, my answer is going to be 180 plus 180 is equal to 360 Newton per Coulomb. And that's going to be our answer. Let's have a look at the options. So option D is going to be the correct option. For the given charge distribution on the ring, the net electric field at the center of non-conducting ring is. Assume the part of ring in first and third quadrant is neutral. Second quadrant is positively charged. Fourth quadrant is negatively charged. All right, so we have a ring. The first quadrant and the third quadrant are neutral, no charge. The second quadrant has a positive charge and has a charge density of 10 nanocoulomb per meter. The fourth quadrant is negatively charged and it has the same magnitude of charge density. We have to find out what is the electric field at the center. All right, so the key concept, you are already aware of it. I'm showing it to you again so that it gets etched in your memory. You remember it well. All right, so what is the magnitude? 2k lambda by r sine alpha by 2. And the direction is going to be along the angle bisector. For the, po for the positive charge, the electric field is going to be away. For the negative charge, the electric field is going to be towards the charge. All right. So let's apply that here. So first quadrant and third quadrant, we don't have to worry about. There is no charge. Let's talk about the second quadrant. Okay. So here we have positive charge. What is the angle bisector? This line is going to be the angle bisector of which angle? Of this angle, which is how much? Which is 90 degree. All right. Now, I have to calculate the electric field. But the direction of electric field is going to be along the angle bisector and away from the positive charge. Okay, so let's calculate the magnitude. So E is equal to 2 into K is 9 into 10 to the power 9. Lambda is 10 nanocoulomb per meter. So 10 into 10 to the power minus 9 to make it SI unit divided by R, which is 1. And then we have sine alpha by 2. What is the angle subtended by the arc? It's 90 degrees. So alpha is 90 degree. So alpha by 2 is going to be 45 degree. All right, 10 to the power 9, 10 to the power minus 9 gone. And then we have 180 and sine 45 degrees. How much? It is 1 upon root 2. Okay, so what do we get? We get 90 root 2 Newton per Coulomb. Perfect. Now let's talk about the negative charge. 
the negative charge is subtending the same angle it has the same charge density but it is negatively charged so the electric field is going to be in this direction okay and needless to say the magnitude is going to be exactly the same because everything is symmetrical all right so what will happen both these electric fields are going to get added because they are in the same direction and then the final answer is going to be just a twice of that and that is going to be 180 root 2 newton per coulomb so that's my answer let's have a look at the options so option a is going to be my right option for the uniformly charged ring sector the net electric field at the point p is so p is the point at the center of this circular arc which has a length of 4 meter and a radius of 3.8 meter and it is uniformly charged with a charge density of 10 nanocoulomb per meter we have to find out what is the electric field at the center all right so uniformly charged circular arc electric field at the center i'm sure you know the key concept by now so just showing you this for a second and then moving to the solution all right so this is the angle bisector so electric field is going to be along the angle bisector and away from the positive charge okay what is the magnitude 2k lambda by r sine alpha by 2 so it becomes very evident that we have to find out alpha so alpha can we say it is going to be l by r because that is the angle subtended by this arc all right so l is 4 and r is 3.8 so this becomes 40 by 38 or 20 upon 19 and the unit is going to be radian now it is given in the question that this can be taken as 60 degree so sine alpha by 2 is sine 30 degree all right so all we need to do is do the substitution find the answer so 2 into k is 9 into 10 to the power 9 lambda 10 into 10 to the power minus 9 si units divided by r which is 3.8 and sine alpha by 2 sine 30 degree is half so this 2 this 2 gone 10 to the power 9 10 to the power minus 9 gone so this becomes 90 upon 38 into 10. So this is 45. This will become 19. Now 45 by 19. So 19, 2 is 38. So it is somewhere between 2 and 3. So approximately this is going to come out to be 2.4 into 10. And my answer is going to be 24 Newton per Coulomb. Now let's have a look at the options. So option D is going to be my right option. A proton is released at rest 10 cm from a charge sheet having uniform electric field around it of intensity 123 Newton per coulomb towards the sheet. It will strike the sheet after the time the charge of proton and the mass of proton is given. So we have a proton, it is placed in a uniform electric field in this direction. So obviously it is going to get accelerated and at one point hit the sheet. We have to find out what is the time taken for it to hit the sheet. All right, so the key concept is very simple. If you place a charged particle in an electric field, the force experienced by it is F is equal to QE. And if it is a positive charge, then the force on the charge is in the direction of the electric field. And if it is a negative charge, then the force is opposite to the direction of electric field. All right, with that said, let's solve this question. Okay, now this proton has been released from rest. So its initial velocity is zero. Now it is a positively charged particle so the force is going to be in the direction of the electric field and how much QE all right so now there is a force hence it is going to be accelerated what will be the acceleration force by mass which is QE by m now it is released from rest it has an acceleration and the displacement it covers is 10 centimeter so we know very well how to find time it is a simple equation of motion s is equal to ut plus half a t square the initial velocity is zero so this becomes zero so t is equal to 2 s by a under root so this will become 2 s by a so q e will be here and m will go upstairs now all we need to do is do the substitution so let's do that so this is 2 multiplied by s which is 0 0.1 meter very important si units mass is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 27 kg divided by charge is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb into electric field is 123 and the root of the entire thing. All right, so 1.6, 1.6 gone. So this 0 0.1 makes it minus 28. And this 10 to the power minus 19, when it goes up, this is going to make it minus 9. All right, so here we are going to get 
20 into 10 to the power minus 10 divided by 123 under root. All right. Now, since we have to find approximate answer, we can do some cheating in the calculation. All right. So this 123, I'm going to make it 121. Okay. Why? Because it is a perfect square. And 20, so 4 square is 16, 5 square is 25. So it's somewhere in the middle. All right. So if I take it approximately, it will come out to be 4.4 divided by under root of 121 is 11 and then 10 to the power minus 5. All right. So this comes out to be 0 0.4 into 10 to the power minus 5 or I can write it as 4 into 10 to the power minus 6 second or I can say approximately it is equal to 4 microsecond. Now let's have a look at the options. Option A is going to be the right option. Protons are projected with an initial speed u is equal to 10 to the power 4 meter per second into a region where a uniform electric field e is equal to minus 720 j newton per coulomb is present. The protons are to hit a target that lies at a horizontal distance of 1.3 millimeter from the point where the protons are launched. Find the total time of flight for theta is equal to 37 degree, charge on proton and mass of proton is given. Now, If we analyze the situation, this is a simple projectile motion. The difference is that apart from gravitational force, there is going to be an electrostatic force as well. So proton is a positively charged particle. It is placed in a uniform electric field. So it is going to experience a force QE. And what will be the direction? Along the direction of electric field, which is downwards. So the net force acting downwards is mg plus QE. So the net acceleration would be force upon mass, which is g plus QE upon m. Now, the acceleration g plus qe upon m is acting downwards. Perfect. Now, think that if qe were not there, only mg was there, then the acceleration is going to be g. Now, g is an acceleration which is constant both in magnitude and direction and it is always pointing downwards. Okay. Now, let's talk about g plus qe by m, this acceleration. It is also constant both in magnitude and direction and it is also pointing downwards all the time, which means that the value of we can assume that the value of g has changed okay so we can just assume or we can take an analogy that the particle has been taken to a different planet where the value of g is different okay but is that going to change the nature of the acceleration no it is constant both in magnitude and direction pointing downwards always so the equations we have derived for projectile motion is that going to change is the nature of the motion going to change no the only thing that is going to change is that we can replace g by g effective. Okay, we can assume that this is the gravitational force acting in this situation. All right, so all we need to do is find g effective and in our formula, just replace g by g effective. All right, so let's find out g effective. So this will be g, which is 10 meter per second square, plus q, which is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19, into e, which is 720, divided by m, which is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 27. Now this 1.6, 1.6 gone. This 10 to the power minus 27 is going to go upstairs and becomes 10 to the power 8. And this is going to be meter per second square. Now 10 is very small compared to this value, so we can neglect it. So the g effective is 720 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second square. Now, now we have to calculate time of flight. So time of flight is given by 2u sin theta by g. Now g we can replace by g effective. So let's calculate this. So 2 into 10 to the power 4, which is u, sine 37 degree is 3 upon 5, divided by g effective, which is 720 into 10 to the power 8. So 3 into 2 is 6. So this is going to give me 120. So this will become 1 upon 600 into 10 to the power minus 4. These two zeros, I can take it up and this is going to become minus 6. Now 1 upon 6, 1 upon 6 we can quickly calculate is going to be 1. So this is 4 and then 40. So 6 into 6 is 36 and we'll continue. So this will be 0 0.167 approximately multiplied by 10 to the power minus 6. So we can write it as 1.67 into 10 to the power minus 7 second and the approximate value we can write it as 1.7 into 10 to the power minus 7 second. That is going to be my answer. Let's have a look at the options. 
So option B is going to be the correct option.